All right, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. It is uh, February 12th, uh, and this is podcast number 17. Every every week, I can't believe we just get one higher. Like, this is... I'm very proud of myself. Last year, we stopped at, like, what? Like, five? Six? If that, I don't even know if I kept track at that yeah, point. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, we're going to do it all year, and it just fizzled out. Uh, but now this is like the ramp up. This is this is this is the time we're starting the seasons. Everything's going on. We want to get as many uh, people involved in high school esports in Illinois. Um, as joining me as always with my second chair here, uh, Keith Kennedy. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here yet again every week. I just rushed home. Yes, after a <laughs> super long day at school teaching and then hosting uh, Springfield public schools for your overwatch match which we'll talk about shortly so, so where we start yeah so uh we're super excited um lots of stuff going on so uh just to recap um overwatch just finished their second uh second week uh fortnite also finished their second week and league of legends starts tomorrow so this will be a really big week and every week we're gonna have lots of stuff going on we'll probably go over recap and see like standings and who's on top and who's where uh and then if we can get some point, um, get some clips in from some students. If you guys want to clip some of your games and send them to us um, from the week before, that would be awesome. Uh, we definitely would love to put some of those on. Just make sure they're appropriate. Make sure they're you know either on YouTube or somewhere where we can pull them off. We can show yeah. them on there. And I can do. I can always put together a quick highlight video. I have the software and stuff for that. We can put together a quick highlight video just highlighting all the matches during the week and all the accomplishments of the players. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We want you guys to get involved even in your own school so that you guys are creating your own videos for your own school to put as your highlight rules to send to scouts and things like that. So uh, keep that in mind. We want you guys to be as involved in your own programs as you are helping us, um, as you'll see what some of my students have done um, today. Uh, even though it's not the correct one, um, we're going to use it um, today for a little bit just because it, it looks nice and I want to use it. Um, but yeah, for those clips, we want you guys to be able to give us clips. We will try to get clips, but again, uh, Kennedy's doing a million things at once, plus teaching and streaming like two two nights and doing scorekeeping. Um, so we'd rather you guys get us them or have your teachers or you know someone in your program create those clips for us, put them up on YouTube and send them to us. Uh, that would be the best way to, to handle that because then we can literally just throw them up um, on our stream and talk about them as we watch them. So um, get, us, get us those. And I, I think... Uh, I think I guess we'll start talking about your Overwatch match tonight. It was a big deal. So tonight was Springfield versus Glenwood. And me not being a native to the area, I didn't know how big this rivalry was. But Coach McGee, the Springfield coach, is a native. And he said it's a really huge rivalry. So with us being so close and me having 12 computers or 14, we decided to host the match here and host both JV and Varsity. Our JVs weren't playing each other, but we had them play in the same room. We had pizza, we talked in the lunchroom, we socialized, and then got to work playing our RC match. And it was an awesome time, and I'm really glad they came out. It was, it's an experience that a lot of students don't get. Yeah, I think it was really cool for them. I mean, how far are you guys apart, like minute wise or miles wise? Uh, probably around 15. 15 minutes? Yeah, like probably 15 minutes, which is. Like it because they're they're a combined district, but it's 15 minutes. So yeah. it was it, it's it's really cool to see this. And also, uh, found out my principal's son is one of them is on the JV team for him. Oh wow! Yeah, nice. That's kind of funny. But it was it was a great a uh, great match. Really hard fought. Every map was a, was a struggle. Every map was a fight. But Glenwood came out three zero. Yeah, that's really good. Congratulations. I think I think that's what uh, we'd love to. Um, try to encourage more. Like at Simons, we'd love to have one of the Chicago teams come over and play us for league, um, if possible. I think we could do league. We couldn't do Overwatch at the moment. Um, I I know that Terp out of Nipple North was talking about having them and Nipple Central uh, play each other in person. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Like having these crosstown rivalries, especially in the schools with two teams. I think that would be uh, really cool. Um, to do if possible if the schools have the lab like at, at Steinmetz we have 11 computers right now um, so we'd be able to do it and then stream also from there um, if yeah. we, were to have, we just have to find the, the biggest problem for us is our lab isn't set up ideally for uh, tournaments because we're literally like facing head to head when against teams so and and we had an issue where we we're in blocks of six 
and you could see the other team's screens partially. Ah. So I uh, I borrowed two rolling whiteboards from uh, Athletics and blocked off space between them, and it made a really good uh, spacer. Yeah, that's definitely a really cool thing. Um, definitely uh, make sure to send those pictures over to our Twitter so we can post them up there um, once you get them all. Together. I got to get them first. Uh, one, of, one of Springfield's coaches has a bunch of them. Yeah, definitely send them over to us, and we can post them up so everyone can see what this live event was. And I think that's, that's kind of what... Um, what we're looking for is to make sure that uh, we get some of these live events because that's what this is all about. Like our lane final is great, but if we can get more weekly live matches, I think that would be fantastic, especially for these schools that are really close or within district. I think that's the, the overall idea is to get them to do that rather than having them just play from home or play from school when they could, you know, travel the 10 minutes um, within district to, to do that or take a bus and, and schedule it around that. I think that's a really cool idea. So yeah, like at central versus North, you can literally walk between the schools. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> uh, Six-hour drive to Chicago for Massac. I mean, if Massac, if you want to come to us, which is only a three-hour drive for you, you can. Oh, my God. It's three hours just to you? Forget that. Uh, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I mean, for they, Massac, it, I'm saying. For Massac. If, like, if they make still... state finals, they get to drive six hours and or fly. I think I think we figured out last year that it's it's not even worth flying because it's still like two hours of driving and then like the flight and all that. Yeah. But yeah, no, that'd, be, that, that, that'd be ridiculous for them to do anything live. Um, you know, I'm praying they make state finals, but well, actually they only have JV this year. So, well, that problem solved something, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, besides that, um, lots of stuff going on, um, next week I have penciled in a guest, so we should have a guest, I will announce that as soon as I get final, um, confirmation on that, um, so it's someone that I've known for four years now, three years, um, haven't talked to him, uh, he's not like a frequent person I talk to, but we always, when we get together at every event, um, always strike up good conversations about high school esports and collegiate esports, so, um, that should be good. And speaking of collegiate, I'm bringing a lot of recruiters to my school really frequently here. And a lot of coaches seem to be asking me, how do I go about finding these guys? And it's really just toss them a DM on Twitter. Yeah. The guys who really care will respond to you. And so all the coaches I've had come out so far really do care and are great to talk with. And they have the best interests of our players at heart. And I now have a collection of business cards I've, I have pinned to the wall in the lab. And players are getting messages left and right because I want to get my players noticed. So yeah. if you want help with recruiters, you can talk to us as admins. I have basically a bit of a bog standard pit sales pitch I put out on my uh, on my DMs, and you can go do that. Yeah, definitely. Um, Twitter is the place to be if you guys haven't made Twitter accounts. If you actually want to do something in high school esports, definitely suggested to make a Twitter um, and, and also talk to your coach and sponsor about making a Twitter for your team, if possible, if your if your school allows it, because it's it's just where high school and collegiate esports thrives. It's 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 meaning, it's it's rivalries, it's it's creating those conversations about things going on and meta changing, and I think it's really important to be in that space um, if you want to be actually involved in in the the esports um, sphere as it is right now. And I'm like, I'm not a social media person, but. It's really, really helpful. Yeah, like yeah, you don't even have to be on there much, but just for DMing and occasional Twitter posting when your what your team is doing. I think that that is just the baseline of it, and then and then starting to create those things once you get a handle on it, or um, passing it over to someone who actually wants to to manage the social media accounts. It is a big deal um, to do it, and there are some programs that some schools use to manage multiple Twitter accounts. Um, so I think that that it's possible for you to to have them do it and even have students do it if it's managed um, well with one of these apps or programs. So league season kicks off tomorrow. Uh, we're planning on streaming, streaming that uh, words are hard, streaming Jones versus Steinmetz, which that's Simons. But I said that that words are at Stevenson, Stevenson, but it's going to be a replay view as their timings don't work out. And one thing I want to try to work on this season is honestly, I'm kind of okay with it in replays because there's no delays and I can just run it as is. And there's no issue with stream stepping and people can be in the chat and watching it. So if it doesn't work out like that, we can always just run a replay view and stream those. Yeah, I think we will have a stream every week, no matter what, um, whether it's a replay or it's live. We like to do live um, if possible. Um, it does help for like if you're. 
uh, commentating and, and fixing and picks and bands and, and filler time. So we can fill that easily, but it's more, um, you know, it is nice to play live. But again, if schedules don't work out, we'll throw a replay up there and just play the two replay games. We we both know how to do that. So uh, it's pretty, pretty interesting to once you figure it out, it's really easy to get set up and keep going. Yeah. So. And then people are in town talking about getting stuff set up. And really, it's just find an interested teacher and have them advocate for your uh, for your group and for your club. You guys can make things happen if you have a teacher who wants to do it and who has the time. Yeah. That's the big issue is a lot of teachers need the time. Yeah. Titan, what school are you from? Uh, that might help me like frame of what it is. I mean, depending on what, what school you're from and how big your program, your school is. Um, can determine it, but the number one thing is finding a teacher or a staff member who actually cares about esports as their their number one or number two priority, like as extracurricular activities. And sometimes it's hard to find. Um, That'd be me. Yeah, there are there are, a lot of times they're already coaching stuff or whatever. But um, as soon as you see that new teacher, um, I think it's really important that you go to those new teachers at the beginning of the year or middle of the year whenever they start and be like, hey. Um, you know, can you, do you want to sponsor this, sponsor this club? Um, likely, uh, unfortunately, if they're male and young, you have a 90% chance of them knowing about games, at least in some form. form. And if you catch them first, then you might be able to do it. Um, oh, yeah. In your outreach and- size, rich, rich style. So, yeah, I think um, I think trying to get more adults involved in it and with stake in, in, in you know, the whole... Uh, esports ecosystem i think is the most important thing um and also just finding the right students i think it's really important to um find students that are good leaders and that if the sponsor is lacking that they can pick up the slack for what it is like i don't um hand coach all of my teams and some of my teams have really good leaders especially my Fortnite crew um for the most part i can tell them that they need to do something and then they will get it taken care of and um, and that's me with overwatch is i don't know a ton about overwatch i picked up as i go on but i don't know a ton and so i or else just are them there to facilitate questions and conversations. Yeah. And I think that's that's the important thing is just talking about, you know, not necessarily strategy game to game basis, but think about communication and and are we ready to go and what's our strategies and what should we be picking and things like that. Um that that type of thing, you know, that's inherent. That 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 goes for any team. It's just being mentally ready and, and making sure you're focused on the game. And I think it's really important to make sure that, you know, the people that are picked as captains are actually leaders and not just the best person on the team. Because I think that's that's a, a false reality that the best person on the team has to be the captain, and that's not the case. There are leaders out there um, on every activity, every sport, that aren't necessarily the best, but they know how to lead. And being a good leader does not mean that you're a good player, and that there's a big difference in there. And some people don't see that. They think, oh, well, they know the most about the game, so they should be in charge. And they might not be the person in charge. They might be... Um, one of the problems of the group, um, especially if the skill level for, from them compared to everyone else is, is uh, a big difference because um, they can be have uh, false expectations that players should be doing something and they're not doing it. And mental game of players is half the battle. It really is. Yeah, and like Mr. X says there, like student leaders are essential. And yeah, exactly. We can fill out all the paperwork. Um, but you guys are going to listen to your peers and your classmates more than you're going to listen to a coach who you believe or don't believe is telling you the smartest thing to do. <clears throat> so, yeah, keep the couple questions coming. Um, while you guys are talking here in chat, um, Juju keeps asking why the games are lagging. It's just epic. Like, we have no nothing to deal with why the game was lagging. Um, there should have been no problems with that at all from our end, so... Um, we're going to look at actually the Fortnite standings here momentarily. My chair is slowly sinking and I can't really fix that. It's really bothering me. That's annoying. I think it's time for a new chair. Yeah, it's, it's, it's getting there. Um, let me I just wonder fix this one on. thing here. All right. Um, uh, this looks fairly good. Let's see. I don't know how to look on screen, but let's. Right up there. All right. So, so Swiss Swiss tournament. Uh, for those who are asking chat, Swiss tournament essentially is just you play someone who's your record or as close to it as possible. Yeah. So basically, you'll play someone if you guys both win. Uh, if there's two, your team is two and zero, oh, then you probably will be um, 
playing each other at some point or you'll play teams likely around that if possible if not possible then you'll play someone else but um they try to play around the the same um as well actually i can't zoom in on this much more um all right so yeah i know i think it's a little small let me see if i can fix that a little bit let's go let's do this f11 it should be a little bit better. Um, That's hard to read on the stream because yeah. it's so small. Let me see if I can. Let me do this. Hide these. Where's my hide? There. All right. I can zoom in a little more. There we go. That should be a little bit better. That's something. All right, so uh, for uh, Fortnite, here are the standings right now. It looks like it's mostly dominated by Salem and Springfield with a couple of George Washingtons in there. Um, I believe that's Naperville Central. Do you know NC? Is that Naperville Central? NC, Naperville Central in the second place. Okay. Um, and then who else? George Washington, Springfield, Plainfield Central, Plainfield Central Barrington, Barrington, and JCP. And JCP, yeah. So right now for Fortnite, uh, remember top 16 um, duos make the playoffs for the first round, and then they'll play one more round before the finals event, um, taking just the top eight. Um, so in order to qualify, you must hit that top 16. And if you look at the numbers that are popping up between some of these teams right now at the top, um, it's pretty ridiculous. They're scoring 25 to 30 or even almost 50 points um, yeah, a week. The, the, to... the gap between playoff teams is 50 points. Yeah, which is pretty ridiculous. So we can kind of see, well, as the weeks go on, we'll see this. Um, we'll see them start to drop off. And I think... Um, hopefully we'll get some more mixed games as people figure out. And we still also have a lot of people, if we scroll down here, uh, we have a lot of people who haven't even scored and haven't, some haven't even played that we've seen. Um, either they've played or they've never posted anything. So hopefully um, we'll figure it out. I think there's still even chances for, I mean, if you look um, right now, making the playoffs is a team of 32. So even if you missed or did bad in the first two weeks, if you have a great week, you can easily shoot up the ranks um, to qualify for playoffs. So I think, you know, don't get discouraged if you haven't placed high or you haven't gotten a lot of points yet in Fortnite. I think it's a 10-week season. It's a long haul. And there are teams that are going to miss, um, especially because of duo arenas. You can't really queue up if you're um, solo in duo arena. So I think it's important to, you know, if, if someone's on vacation or just spring break, um, we are playing through spring break for Fortnite. So you'll have to, you know, either make sure you're playing or, um, you know, or you'll end up taking a, a goose egg that round. So it's kind of important. Um, but yeah, so um, the Fortnite standings are there if you want to see them. Um, next thing I wanted to go over, um, I don't think Overwatch is 100% updated yet, but let's pull that up. Uh, 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 there is a... Where is the standing pop-outs? And now I can't find it. Standings. All right, I guess I'm just zooming in. Um, it looks like he hasn't updated too many of the uh, varsity squads yet um, for Overwatch. Um, it's probably because he was also streaming and didn't get a chance to go through all the results and or people haven't posted them yet. So um, it looks like a lot of them actually are in except for a handful at the top. So Naperville... Cobden, Salem, all those groups at the top have not been entered yet, but a lot of the ones in the middle um, have been. So we'll see um, as we go along. Not too much for that. I don't know if JV is any more filled out. So let's check. Um, nope, JV hasn't been updated yet. So most of those will get updated. Someone was asking. Um, most of these will be updated uh, probably by the end of the night tonight or tomorrow. Um, with streaming and doing all of that at once, it takes a lot out of um of terp of his daily task so um, he literally plays the game and then he streams and then he goes home and deals with family stuff and so he'll either do it later tonight or tomorrow um so expect those on there but then we do have the matchups for um this week for our uh 
League of Legends. So we have two different groups um, for Varsity. We have the Chicago North group, which is basically all of the Chicagoland area, all of the ones that's close. Um, and then also including all the northern suburbs, so basically the Chicago area and then north. And then, um, and then the other group, um, which is the west suburbs and then south. So west suburbs and south is basically everyone else. Um, and it's split up fairly well. I believe it's 14 and 15 for the groups. Um, Chicago, we do have a, a fake team in there as buy team just to, um, cause I wasn't sure how challenge does buys yet. And I want to make sure we didn't screw up the first week. So I just put a blank team in there. And if we have a team drop, then we'll, um, drop both of those teams, but hopefully, hopefully everyone's in. So, uh, make sure you get your guys weekly games done. Um, uh, remember for league every week, your game starts at four 30 teams. Don't have to reschedule. They have under no obligation to reschedule. So um, try to plan around 4.30 or as close to 4.30 because um, we want to make that the set time for all games. So we're not updating brackets so people aren't having to stay late at school or um, have issues um, with getting home or having you know homework or whatever to do that night. Uh, we want to make sure that the set time, 4.30, and only change if you need to. Um, we want everyone to try to aim for that 4.30 start time um, or find subs that can fill in when your players can't make it. Um, we don't want to have reschedules uh, every day, all day, for all of these games. So try to make it as close to 4.30 as possible is the idea. Um, and then for stream matches, like I said, you're under no obligation to change for the stream. Right. So just if you guys want to, say, play it out at a normal time, just talk to us. Yeah, for sure. We'll, yeah, like we said, we'll, we'll, we'll take replays for league matches. So we'll... Um, definitely just take the replay, show them in, on the replay. and we, Like I said, we'll lose picks and bands, but that's not that important. We can talk about that in between and, and whatnot. So um, I think it's it's kind of a really good idea um, to be able to do that and break it up. But um, I'm really excited for the league season to kick off. Um, I, I'm excited that we have so many teams. We have, Like I said, we have 29 varsity teams that are ready to go. And then we have, um, where are we at? I think it's... Yeah, 20, 21 JV teams currently right now. And of That's the JV huge. Teams, yeah, and of the JV teams, I think probably about half of them don't have a varsity team. So we, We're running our guys as a JV team just because the level they play at. Yeah. And I think that's important. It, we want JV to be the growth environment. So if you have a bunch of seniors um, you know, that are on their way out and they might not be ready yet, you know, if they want to, that's fine. But the whole idea is JV is there to grow. So that's where you put your freshmen. That's where you put your new players. And and some JV squads will actually be platinum level players. Like we suggest that they're, uh, you know, lower than that. But if you want your guys to actually get time, um, you know, you can do that. Uh, but the whole idea is if you have like platinum level players that are, you know, possibly fill ins for varsity, is that give your other guys some playing time. Um, because really the, the JV tournament is just for show. There's no, no awards, no nothing given out for JV. It literally is just to get that practice. So, um, you know, maybe swap them out, rotate them and let them, uh, and let them, you know, get the practice that they need so that they can become varsity players in a year or two. Um, rather than just, oh, I'm going to put my whole diamond team in JV and just stomp everyone. It's like, well, what is anyone? That's, at that point? Yeah. That's not how the point of this. I mean, but then you have like Naperville North. JV Overwatch team who is all diamond, but essentially they are the JV because they aren't, those players are not good enough for varsity. So it's all yeah. about, you know, working with your mental and just being like, okay, well, this is a learning environment. We're trying to get better. Even if the competition isn't there, you know, you can still showcase your team um, in that league, but you know, don't, don't run out the score. The whole point is just to get that practice. Um, so they can aim to be varsity in a couple years. Yeah. I was getting your guys time is really important. Yeah, and I think just that, being that competitive atmosphere, a lot of our kids like, oh, yeah, I play ranked, but ranked is a completely different thing than playing with a squad of five in a real match that has stakes in it. And then the, and then the next step is, like, getting them to play in front of a land environment. I think that's that's one of the, the coolest things, and, you know, we'll, we'll change how people react to esports uh, by doing that. So... Um, I also plan for the league rosters. Um, I do have some updates to do. People have been sending me some stuff uh, that they've been messing around with. Um, but I will be updating it. And then I also want to do uh, make OPGG links for all of the teams once the rosters are final. So probably next week I'll have that. That way you can just click on it and load their, their roster or UGG links 
Oh yeah. Those, uh, and there's plenty of sites that people can use to start scouting rosters and whatnot. Yeah, and they're all up there. You easy can copy paste it. We left it open for that so that you can easily um, find that. But we'll definitely just put a link in there that way you can see those teams um, easily. You don't have to worry about oh let me make this link and send it to my things and they can just go in there and click on it and share it with everyone. All right. Um. Not a lot of questions are rolling in. Anything yeah. else we can really talk about? Um, not too much. I think there's been a lot of stuff going on in the esports world right now. Um, you've been watching LCS lately? I, I I don't want to talk about it. As a Team Liquid fan, I am not happy. You are not happy? I, I am... Stop picking Senna. <laughs> All you need to do, you give me a wave clear ADC, he wins the game. You don't, we lose. Stop. I'm really not a fan of the Senna ADC. And like it just the problem with Sun ADC is it's not working. Right. It's not working for them. Yeah. Well, and I think I don't like the Sun ADC meta at all. Well, it's also a previous patch, so once the new patch goes live, it's gonna be gone because they nerfed off all our stats. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully all, there'll be some. All ADC there. stats and all of her soul stacking is dead. Oh, that's right. They did change all of that, right? From they removed her soul stacking pretty significantly. That's good. That means we will actually get back to some real AD carries and not Senna. Cough, cough, Swain. Hey, Cassiopeia has got a lot of presence in bot lane. Senna, Soraka, top is a common thing. Senna, Soraka, top. Sorry. Sen oh, no, 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 Senna. Uh, Sona and Soraka being, yes. are being played in top lane. Yeah, Sona no, and Soraka. Yeah, I saw uh, Soraka so getting a bunch of nerfs. Lane. And then everyone's like, oh, let's just play Sona top. Next, it's going to be Lulu. Next, it's going to be like Karma. Tark. Karma. Oh, Tarek funnels back, by the way. Oh, God. Why? Tar Tarek mid lane funnels are words that should make all of you very, very unhappy. Yeah, that, I, I, it was interesting to have funnel meta because it was just different, which shook up the league. And I think that but, I think league needed it at that time because it was very oh. static, and that kind of shook up that. And then after that, Mages started when you bought when, uh, when in LEC, I mean, when they had I mean, the roll swap. It can't be worse than Juggernaut meta. True. Because Juggernaut Meta was top lane means nothing. You guys whap each other for 20 minutes, and then you go do something else not in lane because your lane doesn't matter. Like yeah. top, Juggernaut Meta was hilarious because top lane could do literally anything. Yeah, I definitely... I love tank meta. That's my favorite. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I am Master 7 Mundo. <laughs> I have zero shame. Nah, I love playing tanks. That's my favorite. So I love tank meta. So I love when tanks are powerful, and then they end up getting nerfed to the ground. Every time. I play Nautilus support. I played Scion top before it was really an LCS thing. And did who? Scion. Oh, Scion. Yeah. Oh God. Two Scion. Ago. Scion makes me not happy when I see him. But I've mained him forever, and people are like, "How is? How are you destroying me?" And it's like, "Hey, that's just what I do." And then. After he started getting played in LCS, it was like, oh, okay, well, now he gets, like, the nerf bat, like, three weeks in a row. So. I mean, it's not bad. Yeah. I, Scion's, like, when Scion or Ultra Tanks are strong, it's very hard to deal with. Yeah. Oh, and that's the thing is I literally would just jump in and hit the guy in the back line and they'd be dead. Because you're, you're forced to build, uh, you're forced to build, uh, Armor pen, otherwise you just lose the game. So they, they they change your build path fundamentally. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, Broxa is Broxa, Broxa back this week now. Broxa is now at uh, in Team Liquid starting this week. Nice. Okay. And uh, not to be mean about Shern, he did great for where he was, but man, I'm really hoping Brox puts some energy in them because they look like a dead fish. Yeah, I think Broxa will, will bring some life back to him. They were really expecting him to be at the beginning, and so I think they were they were put behind from what they thought was going to happen. So, I have not read ten point four yet. I do know there's some uh, some big nerfs coming out. I do know there's also some interesting changes, adding a couple jungle pools that I don't necessarily agree with. I.e., they're adding the jungle pool back to uh, Darius and Talon. What? They're making Darius a jungler now? I don't want to see any more of Darius. Um, also, there's rumors, not confirmed yet, of Silas buffs. 
I think they hit him a little too hard with the when they nerfed him. Oh, the thing is, it wasn't a nerf; it was a fundamental rework of his of how his kit works. Whereas he's no longer auto attacks or resets; he's burst. Yeah. And when true. he does, when he gets a chance to burst, holy crap! Um, I'm I'm just I'm waiting. I'm I'm just waiting to see what happens. Have you been playing any Runeterra? A little bit, a little bit. I'm not gonna lie; it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, I. Uh, I, it, it, I the I, game needs balance work. Yeah, I I like playing the game, but it's gonna be so long for me to get like any of the champions and things that I want. Like that's a big problem. It, it, again, it's a money sink, just like all the card games. I mean, also ephemeral decks are way too dominant. Yeah, yeah. Every every deck that destroys me is like an ephemeral hecarim deck of some sort, and I'm like, oh great, I'm dead. Like one guy literally had the perfect deck or the perfect draw hand draw, one of the two. He literally destroyed me on like the third turn. I'm like, all right. Well. I have, I had a buddy who's a TCG veteran and he's right now grinding out like a just denial based deck where it's basically the classic you don't get to have fun he has he has deny he has remove all text from uh from a minion it's just all this stuff that's hilarious i like that and 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 he's he's right if you tilt a league player once they just give up yeah no i that i can totally see just using the mental tilt them out and they just quit yeah i totally can see that Poro deck? No Poro deck. Poro decks. I, I'm actually working on a Gigabuff uh, Ionia deck right now. It should work because I play, play it against so they just, they just buff like a 2-2 two, two to an 8-8 eight, eight, and it has tough and it has challenger and I'm like, well, I get to lose. Yeah, that I haven't seen that yet, thank God. I played against it once and instantly copied the deck. Can you copy the deak like that? No, I just looked, looked at that. I just looked at what they were gotcha. running and trying well, to I was like, wondering because they have the ways that you can import the deck. I don't know if you literally can copy someone else's deck. Uh not yet. Although you can import decks, yeah. Right. So no, I've been playing. I've been doing trying to do my challenges, trying to work through some of the. Uh, I think I'm, I think I picked Ionia to go first just because I was like, ah, I, I wanted to do check out like the Shen Barrier combo that I played uh, in the first beta. Uh, I am a huge fan of of Freljord. Yeah, I, they're not my favorite Iona, Ionia, but I was like, oh, I want to try Shen. And then I ended up getting the lucky roll of my first champion box and getting Shen. I was like, all right, well, you guys kind of just solidified it. So I spent some wild cards and bought some cards. And the deck's pretty much garbage, though, because I need to spend like 30 more wild cards. But I hate building decks. I, I, don't, know what to, I don't know what to look for. I got friends who are a lot better than this me. Yeah, I, I need to just look up decks. I think that's what I need to do. Because literally, give me a deck and I will play it effectively. But I really hate building decks. Oh, yeah. Like, putting together a magic deck just seems like too much work for me. Painful? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, wait, how many mana do I need of this color to be efficient? Well, why is one less more efficient and one more not efficient? Like, no, I don't need to do That's too much math for me. But after that yeah is there anything else we need to cover for now or i we... think that's it i think we were just here to talk hopefully uh most of people's leaks questions got answered um games tomorrow 4 30 um roster changes will be good until after the first week so basically uh by this saturday if you have any roster changes they must be emailed to us so we can get those in because a lot of people are saying oh what about my name change oh this player is now not going to play so we, we give them till the first week to, to iron out those kinks and then uh, after that, they're completely locked in for the season. So make sure those get in and uh, make sure you guys set time aside Thursdays, 4 o'clock every week. Uh, if you can't do it, find the subs. Um, we don't really want it to handle too many rescheduling and we don't want you to feel like the bad guy for saying no to rescheduling. Um, we want to set that time aside for league um, every week. Um, and then uh, the I will make sure the next matchups go live like Friday or Saturday morning at the latest. Um so that we can, you guys can start scheduling and talking to your team's uh, opponents um, a lot earlier than this week. This week we're kind of just waiting for la- some last minute teams to find out if they're playing or not. So, um, but definitely should be up by Friday night, um, so you can start talking. Other than that, I think that's it. Uh, thank you guys all for for being here tonight on this night, this super long night. Thank you, yeah, uh, Keith, for for making your night even longer. Oh boy, <laughs> I'm going to go to sleep now. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like a plan. I might do that soon too. Um, but 
check us out next week. Uh, we'll be back around 8.15 uh, next week. We do have a special guest. I will announce that again probably uh, in the next day or two once I confirm um, that our guest is good for it. And I'm hoping to have a couple more special guests. Um, also, if you have any connections to anyone, please let me know. Or you think anyone would be a good fit for the podcast. You want to see them interviewed. Um, we definitely want to do it. And then also tell your friends to be here. It's kind of important. We want them to, to interact with us, um, especially in the podcast and our, and our streams. We want you guys to help support us so we can support you. Um, and the more people that show up for streams, the better um, everyone feels about playing. So um, that's why we kind of move the stream time to after the regular time so that we can see have more people in there. And we want to see you guys here. So come join us. Um, but I think that's it for now. Um, thank you again, Keith, for, for joining oh, me yeah. tonight. And yep. everyone, until next week, just be better. <laughs>